The list of fighters in this video was determined after analyzing all of the current pound for pound lists from all boxing analysts. I already know that there will be people complaining about certain fighters not being in this top 10 list, there's some of which I don't even agree with myself. But this list is an overall average of what everyone thinks, so feel free to leave your own top 10 pound for pound fighters list in the comment section below. This is a list of the fighters who have achieved the most success in their current weight division or divisions in the most recent years. With nothing more to add, let's begin. From number 1 to number 10, Vasilo Machenko took a hard fall in the rankings when he lost to Teofimo Lopez in 2020. Lomachenko was considered the best in the world, or at least one of the three best fighters, but one close decision lost against Lopez and he had the whole world doubting him. Lomachenko's technical abilities in the ring are one of the best we have ever seen. That's the reason people started calling him Vasily High Tech Lomachenko. He fights with great speed and crazy angles that allow him to go forward, connect punches, and move out of the way before his opponents even touch him. Lomachenko is considered to be the best amateur fighter in history, with 396 wins and only one loss which he later avenged twice. He is also the winner of two Olympic gold medals which only cemented his title as the best amateur of all time. His professional boxing record currently reads as 15 wins, 11 of them being by knockout, and only two losses. He is the fastest three-division world champion in men's boxing history, meaning he was crowned champion in three different weight classes in less number of fights compared to any other male boxer ever. If you asked me, Lomachenko would deserve to be much higher on this list, but we can ignore the fact that he lost the fight most people thought he would easily win, and he has only fought one since then. I believe we will see Vasil Lomachenko climb up the ranks real soon. In spot number 9, we have none other than Juan Francisco El Gallo Estrada. Estrada has been in plenty of difficult fights against top opposition recently, and he has won all of them. In 2019, he outboxed the number one fighter in the Superfly division, Sorong Bisay. Then in 2020, Estrada knocked out Mexican Carlos Cuadras in a very exciting match. And just recently, Estrada was awarded a split decision over boxing legend Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. Estrada is undoubtedly one of the best boxers right now. He pretty much cleaned up with the best fighters in his division in only two years. However, his most recent fight against Roman Gonzalez was extremely close, so they will face each other once again this year. This upcoming fight against Gonzalez will end up deciding which of the two deserves a spot in the pound for pound list, but right now, this ninth spot is all for Juan Francisco Estrada. Being the heavyweight champion of the world doesn't only mean you're one of the biggest draws in the sport, but it also means you're the strongest boxer in the world. The heavyweight champion reigns all of boxing over every division, and right now that champion is none other than Tyson Fury, also known as the Gypsy King. Coming off his win over the former world champion Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury is regarded as the number one fighter in the heavyweight division. With an undefeated record and wins over Deontay Wilder and Vladimir Klitschko, it's only natural that Tyson Fury would get a place on this list. The only reason Fury isn't higher on the list right now is because he has yet to clean out the division. He is supposed to fight Deontay Wilder one more time this year. If everything goes well for Fury, then he will get a chance to become undisputed in the division by beating Anthony Joshua who holds the other three belts in the division. So yes, Tyson Fury is probably the best heavyweight fighter in the world right now. But since there's no other weight division he could move up to to become world champion at, the only achievements that can move Tyson Fury up the ranking are fighting and beating heavyweight fighters like Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, Dillian White, Luis Ortiz and Andy Ruiz Jr. In 7th place, we have former undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world, Alexander Usyk. I already know some of you will argue that Usyk shouldn't be higher than Tyson Fury on this list since it's most likely that Fury would beat Usyk if they fought. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this list was created based off recent achievements and becoming undisputed in a division is a pretty big deal. After fighting all of the champions in the cruiserweight division, Alexander Usyk obtained all of the four belts in the division, crowning himself undisputed. After that, Usyk decided to take a huge risk and move up to the heavyweight division despite the fact that he is clearly smaller in height and weight than most heavyweight fighters. Even when fighting heavyweights that weigh 40 pounds more than him, Usyk has still managed to win and remain undefeated. Right now, we are all just waiting for his fight against world champion Anthony Joshua to be officially announced. That fight against Joshua will be Usyk's toughest test yet, but if he managed to win, then he will go up in the rankings like crazy. In 6th place we have another undisputed champion, the guy who won prospect of the year, then became world champion, and then undisputed world champion all within a few years, the young king of the lightweight division, the takeover, Teofimo Lopez. Teofimo Lopez became world champion in 2019 when he knocked out Richard Comney, 
and became the undisputed champion in 2020 after he beat the number 10th ranked fighter on this list, Vasilo Machenko. So it's not only that Teofimo is an undisputed champion, but it's the fact that he beat one of the best fighters in the world at the time to become undisputed that ranks him so high on the list. The only reason he isn't higher is because there are many other big names in the division he hasn't fought yet. Names like Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia and Gervonta Davis. Once Lopez fights them, we will all get to see if Lopez still deserves to be in the pound for pound rankings or if there's someone better than him out there in the lightweight division. We finally made it to the top 5 fighters in the world. And in the 5th spot we have yet another undisputed world champion. This time I'm talking about the recently crowned super lightweight undisputed champion of the world the Tartan Tornado, Josh Taylor. Taylor became undisputed after he beat former undefeated champion Jose Carlos Ramirez the last month of May. The reason Taylor is higher than Teofimo Lopez on this list, even though they both are undisputed champions, is the fact that Josh Taylor has already fought and beat the best fighters in his division. Taylor fought Ramirez, Pregre, Baranchik and Postol, and he beat all of them. There is no doubt that Taylor is the best fighter in his division. Now that he has achieved such a high level of success in his division, Josh Taylor is looking to move up in weight and fight current welterweight world champion Terence Crawford. That would certainly be the biggest and most difficult fight of Taylor's career up to now. But the fact that he is trying to reach greatness I think can be appreciated by all of us boxing fans. In fourth place we have the current unified welterweight champion of the world, Errol Spence Jr. As Spence currently holds a record of 27 wins and 0 losses. 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Errol Spence is the owner of two of the four world championship titles in the welterweight division, making him one of the best fighters in the division. And just by looking at his resume, we can clearly see that Spence is a welterweight fighter who has been fighting the best opposition in recent years, as Spence has fought and beat Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, Mikey Garcia and Kyle Brook. And now we are all waiting for Spence Jr. to face boxing legend Manny Pacquiao on August 21st of this very year. This is undoubtedly the biggest fight of Errol Spence's career, and the fight that could bring him glory in the boxing scene and would grant him the title of the best welterweight fighter in the whole world, as long as he wins of course. Now we get to the top 3 best fighters in the world right now. These are the guys you would expect to beat everyone you throw at them at their weight divisions. The guys who not only have amazing achievements in boxing, but the guys that look absolutely spectacular and incredibly dominant every time they fight. So in third place we have former super lightweight unified champion of the world and the current WBO welterweight champion of the world Terence Bud Crawford. A lot of people think that Crawford is the best fighter in the world right now in terms of boxing ability. Terence Crawford pretty much knows how to do everything. He can fight going forwards or backwards, he can switch stances, he can sit in the pocket and bang or he could go around the ring with perfect defense. When Crawford became undisputed in the super lightweight division in 2017, he then challenged himself to go up in weight and attempt to become world champion in a new weight class. Well, turns Crawford did it with no issue whatsoever. Crawford doesn't only hold an amazing record of 37 wins and 0 losses with 28 wins by knockout, but he currently has a crazy stoppage streak of 8 consecutive fights, meaning that he has knocked out every single one of his opponents since 2016. There's lots of people who think Terence Crawford should be considered the best fighter in the world right now. And to be fair to them, it isn't a crazy argument. Terence Crawford is amazingly good at boxing. I don't mind people saying he's the best. But when we talk about his most recent achievements, we have to admit that Terence Crawford has not been fighting the best opponents at all since he started fighting in the welterweight division. Crawford hasn't fought any big names since he became welterweight champion. And that's detrimental to his position on this list, since as you remember, this list bases itself off of recent achievements. I know it's not Crawford's fault that his promotion company can't get a fight made with any other big names in the division, but until he fights top level opposition, it's hard to have him any higher on this list. To be fair, if Crawford fought and beat Errol Spence Jr., then he would probably be considered the number one fighter in the world, no doubt. In second place, we have none other than the monster himself the three-division world champion and current unified bantamweight champion of the world, Naoya Inoue. The Japanese champion Naoya Inoue is probably the most entertaining fighter to watch nowadays. The only fighter as entertaining as Inoue right now might be Gervonta Davis. When you watch Inoue fight, you can clearly see why they nickname him the monster. He simply destroys every single person he fights. You can see all of his opponents crumble in pain every time Inoue lands a body shot. Inoue has crazy power, is crazy fast, has amazing technique and throws punches with the perfect timing and accuracy. He always finds a way to throw that one perfect punch at the right time and at the right place in order to make his opponents grunt in pain as they fall to the floor. 
Inoue's biggest challenge came when he fought the boxing legend Nonito Donaire in 2019 in order to win the Muhammad Ali trophy and take his second world championship belt in the division. In that fight, we found out just how good Inoue was. He isn't only powerful, but he has patience, resilience and drive. After the fight, Inoue confessed that he had to fight half of the bout with only one eye, since after he got caught once by Donaire, he started to see double. So Inoue had to find a way to correct his vision without letting his opponent know he was struggling. And Inoue did find a way, he covered one of his eyes throughout the fight and kept going like nothing happened. This fight was definitely the best fight of all of 2019, so if you haven't already, I recommend you look it up and watch it. After being champion of both the Super Flyweight and Bantamweight divisions, he finally decided to try and become undisputed at the Super Bantamweight division, meaning that his current goal is to beat the other two champions in the division, Genriel Casimero and Nonito Donaire once again. So I would suggest you follow Inoue's career so you don't miss out on these amazing fights. And finally, we reached the number one spot, the pinnacle of current boxing, the place for the best fighter in the world. And I'm pretty sure you already know who the best pound for pound fighter in the world right now is. The man who has been crowned world champion in four different weight classes. The man with the best boxing resume out of everyone on this list. The current unified super middleweight champion of the world, Saul Canelo Alvarez. Some people hate him, others love him, but we can't deny the facts. Canelo has been incredibly dominant for the past few years. After his controversial win against Gennady Golovkin, Canelo has done nothing but beat champions across three weight divisions. Canelo had five fights in a row in which he alternated weight classes. He first fought at middleweight, then he went up to super middleweight, then back down to middleweight, then he out of nowhere jumped to light heavyweight, and finally back down to super middleweight where he is now campaigning at. Even if you think he lost against Golovkin, you can't deny the fact that the fight was pretty close and that at least we have to give him props for fighting the most dangerous fighter in the world at that time. While Canelo already fought Golovkin twice, Earl Spence and Terence Crawford keep avoiding each other and Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua keep postponing their matchup. So say what you want, but Canelo had already two really close fights against a guy who was the number one pound for pound fighter in the world back then. But I believe we have only just recently started seeing the best of Canelo Alvarez. He beat former champion Daniel Jacobs, he beat former infamous champion Sergei Kovalev at light heavyweight, and now he's absolutely dominating the super middleweight division. He is the fighter everyone else wants to face. Jermar Charlo, David Benavides, Demetrius Andrade, Caleb Plant, Jaime Munguia, Gennady Golovkin, everyone wants to fight him. But the truth is, Canelo would be the favorite to win over all of them. The only way Canelo loses right now is if he goes up in weight once again. But even then, a lot of people will have Canelo as a favorite to win over champions like Artur Beroviev and Dimitri Yubol. Canelo Alvarez is one fight away from becoming the undisputed super middleweight champion of the world, so he wants to fight that remaining champion this September. But if for whatever reason that fight doesn't take place, then Canelo could risk it all against Artur Beroviev in the light heavyweight division. What other fighter is doing stuff like this? Who is jumping in between weight classes and beating champions? Who is fighting four times in a 12 month span? Who else doesn't seem to have any rivals that would be a favorite to win against him? Every single pound for pound list I consulted in order to create this list has Canelo Alvarez as the number one fighter in the world. So I think there's no doubt at this point that Canelo is currently unmatched in all unboxing. But who knows, maybe next year the list will be completely different. But what do you think? Are there any fighters you think should have been in the list? I already know that Gervonta Davis and Jermar Charlo are very popular picks for the pound for pound list. So let everyone know in the comment section below what your personal pound for pound list looks like. And remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and click on the notifications bell. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video, goodbye.